In this video, I'm going to review the 12 ton dab press that I picked up off of Amazon. I'll show you how to squish some rosin and I'll compare this press with the other presses that are available on Amazon. What your kids know about the 420 Vapes Zone. Every day I wake up and I get stoned. What's up, guys? It's Troy from 420VapeZone.com. You know me, I'm normally reviewing vaporizers and other dab rigs, cannabis products, but today it's a rosin press. Amazon.com is where I got this and it was $599. Uh, it does not, so this press did not include the pump, which is a separate thing here, like this, at the, for pumping. The pump with the gauge is $139 on Amazon. This press is $599, so together it's like $640. Bucks. Sometimes the pump is a little bit cheaper on the Dab Press website. I've seen it as low as $124. Uh, sometimes when you bundle it, you can get some deals. The plates on this press are four inches by seven inches. Some of the smaller presses are three by five. Uh, these four by seven inch plates up here are anodized aluminum and they're large enough to squish about an ounce all at once. This is powered by the 12 ton bottle jack here and the, the hand pump connects to the bottle jack separately. And then it's powered by this 1200 watt dual PID, dual coil heated controller. What's all that mean? Well, let's talk about it here. The dual PID means that there's two thermostats and two electronic controllers, one for each plate. So one, one controller controls the top plate, and one controller con controls the bottom plate. On some cheaper presses, it'll only have one controller, one thermostat. So there's only one thermal sensing probe in one of the plates, and both plates are heated by the same controller. This press, there's two controllers, which means you can individually control the heat on both plates. A lot of people like to make the lower plate like 10 degrees or 8 degrees cooler than the top plate. That way, when the rosin is flowing, it's uh, not, it, not cooking as much on that bottom plate. Uh, the dual coil means that in the side of this press over here, two heating coils in each plate. So rather than one coil going in and bending or wrapping around inside of that plate, there's actually two coils going in. And uh, so one control, so there's two, so there's two controllers and two coils each. So each, each controller has its own thermostat and its own controller. You'll see up here as well that these plates are bamboo insulated. This wooden insulation will give you faster heat up time uh, and it makes the, the plates more efficient because you're not losing all the heat to the frame. And of course that makes the frame cooler to the, to the touch. If you compare this press to a lot of the other cheaper presses, you'll see the cheaper presses will only have one thermostat. They won't have two coils per plate and they probably won't be insulated. Like the plates won't, won't be insulated. So I, I consider these features to be like the bare minimum. Like if you're going to choose a different press, if you're going to go cheaper and by all means fucking go as cheap as you can get, you can even go cheap and buy a Harbor Freight press and use the dab press cages available on Amazon, which come pre-insulated with these plates and this, this controller, you can, you can really save some money. This press also features a drip tech frame design, which means as you're pressing, you can tip the press over and lay it down on its side. It has these feet and these rubber feet are an optional $15 upgrade. But now with the press laying down, you're, while you're squeezing, you can drip your rosin directly onto parchment or a piece of silicone or right into a mason jar, right into a little jar directly underneath. So you can get the rosin off the plates as quickly as you can. That way you're not not heating the rosin. Uh, this is a cool little feature. I've only done it a few times. Uh, it's it's a little more work and preparation. So if, if you need you need a place to like lay down the press, and it really only matters for big presses. Like if you're do, if you're squishing like an ounce at a time or you know 15 20 grams at, at once, that's when you get enough to actually get that drip. If you're only squishing 10 grams, you, you'll probably only get a few little little drips and a minimal amount of reward but it is fun to tip the the press over like that what i like about it is it's complete it's a complete package uh, granted the pump is separate but you can you can still buy it in like the amazon bundle uh, it's got the good plates it's dual heated dual controlled it's insulated it's everything you need like you don't have to go out and put things together i don't like putting things together 
I don't like having to buy a press from Harbor Freight. Like I looked at that and that was like back in back when I was wanting to build a rosin press, you know, five years ago, that was the way like, oh, you just go to Harbor Freight and you get this 20 ton press and then you buy a plates from here. You get this, you get the matching plates from so-and-so and then you buy the, the controller or the, the, and the heating coils and you put it all together. It's like, wow, a lot of fucking work and a lot of sourcing of parts. I like that this is complete and it's available on Amazon. And honestly, since the time that I've purchased this, there are even better bundles from Dab Press available on Amazon. I purchased this a year ago, and at the time, the only 12-ton press available was, was the one with the separate pump, and I'll talk about the whole separate pump here in a second. I like that it's available on Amazon. I like that it's large, it has large enough plates and enough power to cover most options. Like, this is a pretty powerful press, and it's gonna cover most people's needs. What I dislike about this press, and I had to stretch. I had to like be a little, little bit nitpicky to find some some dislikes about this press because for one I don't know rosin presses all that well I know there's a bunch of them on the market and, and they have a lot of bells and whistles that aren't really going to improve your rosin turnkey they're more of things that somebody who presses rosin every single day would benefit from whereas somebody who presses rosin uh, every couple weeks or you know once a week or when you get some good weed you know like a casual presser like those features aren't going to really serve me right now so this this press covers everything that i need but what i dislike about it or what i what i could could or at least what i feel could be improved is the magnet placements and the way the magnets are designed the the pre the pre-installed magnets are here and here and it comes with these little cheerio magnets that that match which is cool and and they they work fine uh but the problem I ran into is I, I wanted to use these cute little push pin looking magnets where they were like fake plastic push pins or I, I just wanted to be able to use any other big magnet preferably with a handle for for managing the parchment and, and that's really where the magnetic portions come into play the magnets are used to keep your parchment paper in play or out of the way today let's say that we're gonna be a rhyming parte fucking a stop it <clears throat> all right with the with the the magnets holding your parchment you don't really need uh fancy shit here so like this this whole magnet thing is 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 again it, it's it's a user interface polish opportunity so when you get your parchment in here let's say <clears throat> i wish i had something to demonstrate is that seriously cool huh? so i guess my complaint with the magnets is they're pretty small and the way that they're directional like the magnetic directional radial thing makes it so only certain style of magnets will will work friendly with them like i've, I've had some magnets that have like little handles and stuff that i really wanted to use uh, but they just didn't work they wouldn't stick they wanted to like flip over and because they had a plastic handle on their side they wouldn't they wouldn't stick that way i found that these little ball magnets Remember these things? These are like bucky balls. They were like banned a few years ago when some angry mothers got mad that babies were potentially swallowing these and, and, and hurting themselves or some shit. I don't know. But if you can find these little round magnets, these actually work really good. And there's there's multiple magnetic points like on the plates. Like there's that screw. But what I'd like to see, honestly, is just a like a bar, like a full a full magnetic bar. That, that I could stick other magnets to or other pieces of, of metal because sometimes sometimes holding the parchment is the hardest part of pressing rosin, at least for me. I, I fucking, I don't like dealing with the, the parchment and folding and all that stuff. They do make some new things out there like these directional flow plates where you can press without using parchment, but I don't have any experience with those and I don't think Dab Press has those available yet. But so this is obviously not how you put the parchment when you're squishing rosin. I was just trying to demonstrate the, the magnetical aspect so the, the dislike is the magnets could be improved. I don't know, it's not really a dislike, but I had, I had to put something in the negative column. Uh, and I'm not going to be that guy that says, oh, it could be cheaper, it could be free, because that's... I want to talk about the power of the press and how much power you really need, because this press or similar presses from Dab Press and Amazon are available as low as 4 ton. They're available in 6 ton, 10 ton, 12 ton, 20 ton. And I want to kind of decipher and, and help you decide which press you need all right let's take a look at what else amazon has to offer with this dab press and this this dab press store because 
they have four ton and six ton and honestly four ton and six ton presses are enough for for most people especially most at home squishers the four ton or the six ton even the, the four ton is very much capable of squishing like 10 14 15 grams at a time using bottle tech a lot of the presses that are available here are overpowered like 12 ton 20 ton that's a lot of power a lot of power the ideal psi for squishing rosin is only 500 to 1500 psi so with a 12 ton press you you take that power and you divide it down into the square inches of the footprint of your puck or whatever you're squishing so if you're squishing bottle tech method which is what i do uh your puck comes out looking like this it comes out round even though it started out as a rectangular bag the bag in bottle tech is packed in a way where it's squished vertically. So the corners are tucked in and it's squished vertically. So with bottle tech, you're minimizing the footprint into this like two inch diameter circle and a two inch diameter circle is a square inch area of 3.14. So 3.14 square inches is the, is the footprint of all of that pressure when you're using bottle tech. With 3.14 inches of surface area, you only need 3.14 tons of, of power to achieve 1,000 PSI on one puck. So if, you, if you're packing 14 grams into one puck doing bottle tech, you only need a three ton press to get a really, really good squish or adequate rosin uh, yield. So a four ton press is more than enough for a 15 gram squish. So if you're, if you're home squishing, I advise that you go to a four ton or a six ton press. Like this, this six ton press right here with the, the three by five inch plates, that's what I would be buying right now if I were buying it again. I might, might bump up to like a, a 10 ton, but I really don't need it. Like I don't need the 12 ton. The 12 ton is, the 12 ton is more pressure and more power than I need. And it actually affected my early squishes. So while I was learning to squish rosin on the 12 ton press, it had so much fucking power. Like I wanted to use all that fucking power. You know, the gauge was barely moving when I was doing my early squishes. And what I was doing is I was squishing too fast and too hard because the press, the press had so much power to use. So I'm blaming the press, even though it's probably still my noobish mistake, whatever I can, I can do what I want. Right. The point is smaller presses are more than capable with the 12 ton and the four by seven inch plates. I can do four bottle techs and cram them all in there and squish four at a time. I don't because that's hard. That's hard to do. I do two at a time with like 24 grams in a squish. I can actually squish two ounces at a time using four bags or bottle tech methods uh, and get, get four of them in there. It's a lot of work to cram four, four of them in there, but I can do it. Uh, I don't. I don't I, I do two instead I do two at once which is an ounce I do an ounce on my average squish or maybe 20 grams I don't do the the horizontal rectangular method I've tried it and I just don't get as good of results sure you can but I, I just I don't when I was first shopping for the press I didn't like that the pump was off body like it was kind of a turn off I I thought having an all-in-one unit would be better but then as i saw some people using the all-in-one units and they had to like hold on to the frame and and pump on it i kind of got to see both sides of the of the benefits so it, it, to me it seems like the on body pump requires a little more body strength because you have to you have to hold the frame and you have to to pump on it with the off body pump it's i can just set it down and i can just have a nice easy you know pumping action but it's a bigger footprint these these things are all separate they're like big heavy nunchucks makes this press a little less portable like if i want to carry it around it's a it's more of a, a bundle of things versus a press that has the the jack and the pump and everything all built in and you can just you can just carry it so a little bit of pros and cons there i will say that if you're doing big presses like if, if you plan to use larger surface areas of your puck, you're going to be maximizing the pressure of your press. So if you plan to do the larger areas pucks and you and you wanna maximize all 12 tons, probably better off going with the off body pump. But if you're only doing small squishes, like uh, like one bottle tech and you're keeping it vertical and a small footprint on those plates, uh, the on body pump, you, you don't need to, to leverage the, the maximum potential of your press. 
So using the on body pump to achieve that three tons or whatever you need to get a thousand PSI won't be that much of a, of a upper body hassle with the on body pump. I wish I had the on body pump, honestly, like I, I wish this was a smaller unit with, with the pump right here. I would rather, I'd rather have it all in one at this point. I, I am a grower and I plan to grow and use this a lot more, but right now I still wish that it was a little bit smaller and easier to manage. So let's talk about how to squish rosin in this rosin press. Uh, I already mentioned that I like the bottle tech method and with the bottle tech method, the way you're doing it is with the seams of the bag inside. And these bags are also available on Amazon from Dab Press. I usually use the 90 micron or the 120 micron for flour, but these here are actually 160 uh, and they're two inches by four and a half inches. You can bump up to a two and a half inch if they have them, but I think I think the ones that Dab Press sells are two inches by, by four inches. What I'm doing is I'm poking in the corner just to invert it like this with my finger, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Uh, if it helps, you can use like the pointed edge of a scissors or a pen or a pencil. Just don't get ink and lead and shit on, on your bag. Uh, sometimes I, I have to put my finger inside and uh, just kind of force it, just to kind of pull it little hood over there all we're doing is we're inverting these corners so that the bag can stand upright and be round and as it squishes down we don't want those corners to go out so what we're going to do is we're going to pack our material in here so that these corners stay flat like on the base so we'll we'll manually build a little base making the the base of the bottle tech round with nugs uh, that way, that way the bottle tech stays vertical. You don't have to use bottle tech with this press. You can squish regular nugs. You can use pre presses. Like you can use a pre press where you cram your nugs in here, or your chunked up nugs, and you you press it into a a puck. You can press that puck straight up, or you can pick that puck and you can put it in one of these bags. Both ways work. All those ways work. It's an agile machine, but the pressure that you apply and the the methods that you use vary a little bit like whether you're doing a larger footprint you have to apply more pressure etc etc we talked about that so with with the bottle tech method uh, i i pack as much in here as i can and then i trim off the top i usually trim off the top as i'm packing or before i start packing just just to make it easier to work with i know an inch and a half of it is not needed so get it out of the way in the beginning that way it's just less hassle to, to, to pack. Make sure it's even as you're packing. So as you're as you're cramming the, the herb in, make sure that you're building a nice tight cylinder. You wanna do as much pre-pressing as you can with your hands. Uh, as, you're, as you're packing that puck, uh, push down on, on the puck that you're building and pull up on the bag to make sure that there's no excess material of the bag being packed with your your puck what you want is the least amount of netting material and the most amount of flour in there that way you're not losing rosin to the net because this netting material will absorb some of your rosin line your plates with parchment paper run it through the top through the other side and then back through something you can use two pieces if you want but Usually one long piece is, is how people do it. As far as your press goes, this is where things get controversial and everyone will have different advice. Some people do their entire squish in less than two minutes. Other people do eight minute squishes. Some people will squish at 170. Some people will squish at 250. A lot of people freak out at anything over 190. So I tend to set mine at like 187 on top and 183 or 185 on, on the bottom. Load your puck in there and give it a partial squeeze you don't want to give it the full squeeze but it squish it down to the to the near range of power uh squish it down to the point where you, you get some some reading on your on your gauge but not too much this is considered the preheat mode this is where you can give it 30 seconds or up to two minutes of preheating i tend to give it like a minute and a half two minutes of, of preheating at this amount of pressure once it's preheated then I, I start the squish. I usually start my timer. By the way, use a timer, use a stopwatch. Uh, start the timer when you get the, the initial preheat pressure applied. Uh, and then around the, the two minute mark or the three minute mark is when I start to give it full pressure. Give it the, give it the pressure that is needed uh, based on the, the PSI that you want to achieve. I usually just eyeball it and, and go by feel. Uh, using the gauge on this, it, it goes up to, to three, 
two or twenty five hundred or three thousand, no problem. Go gentle. Don't don't try to squish it all all at once. Keep applying pressure slowly and maintain that that pressure. Give your your rosin time to start to flow. You know, like give it some pressure and then wait. When you see the rosin coming, then you start to apply some more pressure to help it along. If you squish too fast, you'll end up getting all kinds of plant fats and lipids and things that you don't want. So squishing too fast will actually ruin your rosin and, and get you the nasties. Uh, if your rosin is dark, it means that your flower is, is aged. Uh, fresh flower will yield blonder results and lower temperatures will also uh, give you blonder results. But darker rosin is not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that the flower is usually not fresh. And by not fresh, I mean more than a few months old. So the rosin that I'm squishing in, in this footage uh, is from flower that was harvested in January. So the, the flower is nine months old and it uh, made the rosin this dark. So, uh, to harvest your rosin, I like to let the rosin cure on parchment uh, for probably 30 minutes before I, before I bother harvesting it. Uh, I harvest it with a, a flat spatula or a round backed spoon spatula, uh, depending on, on how it works. I, I like to let the, let the rosin harvest itself by collecting it and, lend, and flipping it over on itself and letting it stick to itself to pull off the paper rather than using a tool to scrape the paper because the parchment may have something and I don't want to, I don't want to tear the paper. I don't want to make the paper thin or scratch any thing off the paper. I want to let the rosin, uh, cohesive properties do its work i have the the two by four one and the cylindrical one i didn't get very good results with with this and the bags i i, I did okay using the pre-press squishing just flour but whenever i tried to put the pre-presses into the into the bags i don't get as great of results as I would like to get. So I usually stick to the bottle tech. I might not have the right sizes of the bags for these pre-presses. Uh, squishing whole nugs is also possible, but it's, it's hit or miss. You know, it, it's fine if you if you just want to like test out some nugs and see how this strain squishes, but you get a lot better rosin with the filtered bags. So let's talk about if a rosin press is even right for you. The FIFO rule or the Geigo rule totally exists here. That's fire in, fire out which also translates to garbage in, garbage out. If you have access to quality flour to use with your rosin press, but you don't necessarily have access to affordable quality solventless concentrates, the rosin press might benefit you. If, if you like to dab and you wanna have control of, of what's going in, you don't like the BHO or you don't like the hexane dissolvents or whatever they're using, you, if you just wanna be in control of your cannabis concentrate experience, rosin press is a good option to go with. With a rosin press, you can take a, a quality nug, stick it in there and, and squish it and have good dabs anytime you want, really. But don't expect to turn shit weed into fire rosin because it's not gonna happen. Not even Superman is gonna help you with that shit Reggie. And if you grow, if you're growing cannabis at home, I think a rosin press is almost a must for you if you're dab. If you don't dab, then obviously, probably shouldn't be watching this video. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, unless you're selling. If you're trying to sell your rosin, then yeah, of course, right? I, I envision myself as a grower, eventually, potentially even skipping the flower altogether and just going straight to the rosin, uh, straight to even hash rosin for that matter. So, uh, so a rosin press is, is uh, very beneficial there. Hope this video helped you in your adventure. Please use my links in the description. Uh, you can find all of my cannabis content at 420vapezone.com. You can join the 420vapezone Discord community, 420vapezone.com slash Discord for vape talk, rosin talk, uh, video games, daily sessions, uh, even free beer. Just kidding. Can't do the free beer. Appreciate you watching. Links are in the description for everything, including my Patreon. Uh, tune in every Friday on the Troy and Jerry Think Tank. That's a different YouTube channel that you probably need to go search for, but I can probably link to it in the description as well. Uh, every Friday, 6 p.m. for a nice, fun live stream and sesh with Jerry and I. Thanks for watching. Peace out.